Breathing trouble in a child immediately after birth causes lot of worry to the treating physicians and the parents. We'll be discussing a few causes of breathing trouble in a newborn so that it allays the anxiety of the parents as well as the doctors. The causes of such breathing trouble may be divided into two parts. One is medical cause where the disease which causes the trouble is treated by medicine and that may also include ventilatory support. But there are some specific causes which happens in a newborn that can be corrected by surgical measures. And me as a pediatric surgeon will discuss and restrict my presentation to the specific surgical causes. And if we think about our breathing system, we first have the nose. The nose has some opening in the front, but there are two openings at the back also. Like as you see here, this is the front, but at the back there is another opening of the nose. And that opening may be closed at birth on both the sides. And newborn children are uh, obligatory nasal breathers, so they only can breathe through the nose and since they cannot breathe through the mouth, they get into severe respiratory problems. Now such respiratory problems may be in the form of flaring of the nose, the retraction of the suprasternal area of the intercostal muscles, or even the child may have strider or sinuses. And coronal atresia, as it is called, which is closer of the posterior end of the nares, can give rise to all these features, and this is definitely surgically correctable, initially temporarily, after that finally, the opening can be blocked by a membrane or bones. Now as we go down the airway, we get into the trachea. Now the trachea is like this, the pharynx, after that is trachea. Now I will enlarge this trachea into a schematic diagram where this is the larynx. Sometimes there may be a narrowing of the trachea immediately below the larynx. And that is called a condition called subglottic stenosis. This is a difficult problem. And the trachea of the child, which usually takes about 3.5 or 3 millimeter endotracheal tube, may not even accommodate a 2 millimeter tube. And such children are very difficult to treat. But thankfully, this is a very rare disease. At times, we may have to do tracheostomy in such patients. Now, the next disease that comes to my mind involves the trachea after the larynx where it's a very common occurrence. The child breathes noisy, but the noisy breathing is more while the child is awake or crying, and it becomes less when the child is sleeping. And the cause of such noisy breathing is usually laryngotracheomalacia, means that the larynx, the trachea, and the bronchi are soft. Their architecture is not well developed, and when the child wants to breathe in, the wall of the trachea and the bronchi collapse on itself so that the air cannot go in. So the child has to struggle for breathing in. But thankfully, this laryngotracheomalacia do not cause enough obstruction to lead to lowering of the oxygen level in the blood. So these children usually do all right. They can be fed with time and as the child grows in body weight, the laryngotracheomalacia takes care of itself and the child gets up, grows out of it. Now as we grow beyond the airway, we have the lungs. And mainly the parenchymal diseases of the lung, like meconium aspiration syndrome or infection or even prematurity can give rise to respiratory distress. But these are usually treated by medical people and the surgery is not involved into it. But there are some conditions where the surgeon is called in, like if the patient is having respiratory distress at birth, people do bag and mask and the pressure inside the lung increases and the air leaks into the pleural cavity. This is a collapsed lung and that is air in the pleural cavity called pneumothorax. Here also the pneumothorax may become under tension 
which collapses the lung on this side and the heart is pushed to the other side and the lungs on this side also is not allowed to breathe properly so the child goes into the respiratory distress and in that condition we'll have to do surgical treatment in the form of putting in an intercostal tube and the child remarkably improves after intercostal tube. After the trachea and the bronchus we have the lungs and there is a condition in which the food pipe is not fully developed and if you can have a close look at the upper end of the food pipe which is not developed beyond this you can see a rise tube has gone down and then it has quieted up. So this is a patient of esophageal atresia but the unfortunate part is the lower end of the esophagus is connected to the airway and the acid of the stomach and milk if it is fed goes into the chest and give rise to severe pneumonia and if the condition is not corrected at birth the child is not going to survive. But we had zero survival of this disease in 19, till 1986. There was only one anecdotal survival. Nowadays, we, with the present kind of infrastructure and the support, as is available in this hospital and some other hospitals in Calcutta, the survival of such children with esophageal atresia is nearly 80%. Next, we come to diseases which can involve the pleura. And when a child is born with respiratory distress, a condition is adopted to called bag and mask ventilation, where the intrapleural pressure becomes very high and there may be leakage of air into the pleura, giving rise to pneumothorax. When lung on this side is collapsed and there is pressure on the uh, uh, heart which pushes the right lung and do not allow it to work. So the child goes into respiratory distress. If you put in a simple in intercostal tube through the intercostal space, the child dramatically improves. Now this is a condition which is little. If you see, look at this x-ray, there is no air in the abdomen and all the intestine, the spleen, the liver part of it has gone into the chest and this side of the chest has no lung. The heart has been pushed onto the right side and only this amount of lung is available for the purpose of ventilation and this condition has happened when the child was three months old in the mother's womb. So since then the lung has not developed and this leads to a condition called hypoplasia of the lung. Survival of these children depend on how much of workable volume of lung available to the child. If the volume of lung available is very low and is not adequate to support the life of the child the child will not survive. So a patient who has presented very late within a few hours of birth, that child will not survive. Thankfully, with the kind of ventilatory support which is now available, like a high frequency ventilation, nowadays we can salvage such children also. There's another uh, system that is not still available in our country, is called ECMO the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation you know is this child like this will be put on ECMO and the heart and the lung will be bypassed for months and that time will be given to the lung to mature and the child can be taken out of ECMO subsequently and will have a normal life. Now this is another condition in which it looks like a pneumothorax. The left side of the chest is completely black. The right side there is lung. This is a congenital lobar emphysema where the upper part of the left lobe is usually hyperinflated. This increases pressure on the right, left side, pushes the heart to the right side and do not allow the right side of the lung to work also. So the child presents with respiratory distress and we now have the facility of doing CT scan which shows that the left side there is almost no lung and this is only the ventilating lung available but thankfully we can very successfully treat these patients nowadays with surgery and the child has a normal life. There are a few common causes which give rise to breathing trouble in a newborn child and they are diseases which can be corrected by surgical intervention. There are some more rare causes of distress caused by surgical diseases in the newborn period 
but since they are very dear, I have not got into the detail of it. This in short is the surgical treatment and cause of respiratory distress in children. Thank you very much.